Hey besties! Let's get into this. I hope you're all doing well. Sorry it's been a while. I've been doing this video, basically. I've been consuming my time with Colleen Hoover books. I think that Colleen Hoover is like probably the most hyped up, talked about, popular author right now. At least on like book talk and booktube. If you're somehow unfamiliar with Colleen Hoover, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. She is an author who's very very well known for her standalone romance novels. I believe she might have like a few series, but most of her books are standalone. They're usually around like 300 pages and they're really really easy to just quickly breeze through. She loves a good plot twist and yeah. That's, that's pretty much all you need to know. Every time I'm talking about books that I like reading, someone mentions Colleen Hoover or one of her books. One thing you should know about me, if I see a bunch of people talking about it, I've got to try it. I have FOMO. That's just how it is. But I decided to document the process for you guys and I'm gonna let you know what I think. If I think her books are worth the hype, if I enjoyed them, just how I feel about them overall. This is gonna be a reading vlog, so there will be spoilers. I will be including like my real-time thoughts as I read the books. I will put timestamps for each of the three books and the sections, so that way if there's one that you haven't read yet or one that you wanna skip to just to see my thoughts on, uh, you can do that. But yes, there will be spoilers in my reading vlogs and reviews for these books, okay? Without further ado, let's get started. We first are going to talk about It Ends With Us. This is actually the first one that I ever bought. I bought this before I even decided to do this video uh, because I had seen it literally everywhere. I want to say that this is probably her most popular and most talked about book. This follows a girl named Lily and when Lily was younger her parents were in a very unhealthy, toxic, and abusive relationship and so she kind of grew up witnessing that, witnessing her father be abusive um, and when she was younger she also met this guy Atlas who was this homeless teenager that was like kind of taking shelter in this abandoned house by her house, like in her backyard basically. So they met, they fell in love, um, and now Lily is like much much older when she meets Ryle who is a really successful doctor who seems like he has his whole life together and he just, you know, they obviously have a romance as well. It's kind of like a love triangle-ish type story but that's basically the gist of it. It's kind of just reflecting back on her relationship with Atlas, her first love, and this relationship with this new guy now that she's older and more mature. This is the only book out of the three that I read prior to this video. So I do not actually have a reading vlog for this book, but I'm just going to summarize my thoughts, talk about what I felt, let you know what I rated it, and then for Ugly Love and Verity, I did vlog my entire reading experience. So, so as I mentioned, it's kind of like a love triangle between Lily, Ryle, and then Atlas, because Lily and Ryle get together, they start this relationship, everything seems to be going good and then Atlas kind of reappears like he like you know they run into him and that kind of throws a wrench into everything because Lily's like wow wait this was like the first love of my life and he moved away and da -da -da, like it was kind of unfinished and she doesn't really know how she feels about it but here's the thing this first of all I don't like love triangles in general. I just don't. Not since Twilight, bitch. Like, Twilight was the last one that I'll ever put up with. I hate love triangles. This is even worse because I didn't want Lily to end up with either of the guys. Ryle ends up becoming abusive physically, and so obviously can't really ship that. Then on top of that, Atlas and Lily didn't really get enough character development for me or didn't get enough context, enough fleshing out. Like their relationship didn't really make sense to me because sure, they had fallen in love. She had lost her virginity to him and all this stuff when they were like teenagers, but they haven't seen each other in eight years. And that's where I got really tripped up on the plot where it's like, look, if I went and saw my ex from eight years ago, like there would be no feeling. It's been too long. Like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like Lily and Alice, like, instantly were just, like, in love again, and it just didn't, like, make sense to me because, bitch, you haven't talked in eight years. But yeah, this should not be marketed as a romance in general. Um, it's more, a, it's more about a story of a woman going through an abusive relationship and learning to choose herself and break the habit. It ends with us. This toxic cycle is going to end with us. And here's the thing. I think I would have liked that 
if I wouldn't have expected it going into the story, but I totally 100% did. I don't know if it's just because I'm a fucking like mega brain, mega mind, giga chat, 4000 IQ, but it just was so obvious to me. There's broken, shattered vase with flowers on the cover. It's literally called It Ends With Us. When do you ever hear that used unless it's like we're ending a toxic cycle? I don't know. And when I discovered like in the beginning chapters that her mother was physically abused by her dad, I just knew where it was going immediately. Like I just knew. So it didn't shock me. I didn't get to like fall in love with Ryle and then have that ripped away when he he changed or became violent. And I didn't even enjoy it. So it's just like, there wasn't much for me to enjoy here. Like, I don't know. Colleen Hoover does do that though. All of her covers I've learned <laughs> have something to do with the story. And out of the three books here, this is definitely the most obvious to me. This one like really was like, bop, bop, bop. You know, like I could just tell what it was gonna be about. So yeah, I don't know. I think if I would have went into it with a little bit less knowledge, maybe I would have enjoyed it more, but I just didn't. There were also a few things that I didn't enjoy about the writing itself. Why we needed to include like, <sighs> Nemo references like just keep swimming and Ellen DeGeneres was like a fourth main character in this book which was so cringe to me I mean let's be honest like her name is Lily Bloom and she wants to be a florist could we have come up with anything else I rated this 2.5 stars I liked Lily as a character actually and I think her character development throughout the story was really nice like I liked Lily as a character enough that I feel like I would have just liked this book more if Lily just kind of ended up single and Atlas just like wasn't even in the book at all is that controversial am I the drama I don't think I'm the drama. I could see how, why people would love it, but it just wasn't for me. I knew what was coming. I didn't care about the other healthier relationship. There was just a lot of cringe in here. A lot of cringe, a lot of Pinterest quotes. Just, yeah, it just didn't stimulate me. I gave it two and a half stars, mostly because I flew through this. It was such an easy and it was an entertaining read. And the last thing I'm gonna mention before we move on to the next book. I didn't like the pregnancy trope. I don't like pregnancy trope. I don't like a surprise pregnancy. The only thing I wasn't expecting in this book was the pregnancy, which I mean, I guess it's kind of like a good and a bad because it's like, okay, that was a good plot twist. I didn't see that coming, but it's also bad because I'm just not a fan of like pregnancy trope necessarily. So the pregnancy is probably the only part that I did not see coming out of this book, but everything else was just very predictable to me. I don't know, two and a half stars. Next, we're gonna move on to Verity. Okay guys, it is Saturday and I'm going to officially be starting my second ever Coho book. And I decided to go with Verity, mainly because it's the only other book that I own and Ugly Love is still on the way. I ordered it today. <laughs> I honestly have higher hopes for this. I'm hoping it'll give me more than It Ends With Us gave me because I literally have no expectations going into it. I feel like with It Ends With Us, I kind of already knew what was gonna happen going into it. I had these expectations where this book, I have like basically nothing to go off of. So I'm gonna be live reacting my thoughts. Let's get started. Let's see how long this takes me to finish. 314 pages, which should be a breeze for me because I've been reading like 500 page books recently. So I'm excited that this is a short one. Let's see what you got, Coho. Love that we're opening up with a guy getting just hit by a truck. <laughs> what an opening, you know? Okay, so we're in Manhattan. New York! There's something that hits different about reading a book that's set somewhere that you've been. And they, they talk about cities or places or monuments or stuff that you've, you've seen before. It just hits different, so I love that. I don't love that we're on page eight and we're already, like, comparing trauma. <laughs> Jeremy's like, I pulled my eight-year-old daughter's body out of a lake five months ago. And then Lewin's like, yeah, well, my mom died of cancer, but you win, basically. And it's like, pretty sure both of those are very traumatizing and hard things to go through. And I don't think we should be like comparing like who had worse trauma. Like, I don't know. Okay, I just read the first chapter of Verity's supposed autobiography. And why do I like her like 10 times more than I like Lowen? Is that her name? Yeah, that's her name. <laughs> it was hot. It was steamy. I think I'm a Verity stan account as of right now. Okay, so chapter three, Lowen is talking about her ex-boyfriend Amos who liked to be choked during sex, which I feel like isn't that crazy. Like, I feel like that's not that strange. Like, a lot of people 
enjoy that. But look at this paragraph. I think that's what worried me the most with him. In your early 20s, vanilla sex should satisfy a person without the need to introduce fetishes so early on in a relationship. Says fucking who, bitch? I don't know if this is just Lowen's character or if this is Colleen Hoover trying to like implant her little theories on life in her books, but either way, ew. No, we don't slut shame here. Imagine being like, choking is only for people ages 30 and up. <laughs> if you're 29 or younger, you should be doing missionary only. Not there being legitimate bite marks on Jeremy and Verity's bed. She says that it's probably from intense sex, but I have a feeling it's from something else. Like, I don't know. Okay, just kidding. I'm on page 85 and it turns out that Verity was biting the headboard because he was eating her out so good. I mean, go on, girl. Good for you. I'm not gonna lie. For a thriller, for a psychological thriller, I did not expect it to be so goddamn horny. Verity and Jeremy kind of freak freak. Good for them. But like, damn, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay, it's been a few hours. I had dinner and I spent some time with Josh, but I'm reading again. And there's a line in here that I feel like is hinting at something. I'm here to discuss the first thing my baby ever stole from me. Jeremy. I didn't notice the theft at first. So why do I feel like Verity's involved in her kids' deaths? Because she was jealous of the attention that he gave his kids. Something's going on. <laughs> this bitch is suspicious. Not her describing something as an epic burn. I am cringing. I'm... I'm cringing. Ignore my headset. I am reading in between matches of Dead by Daylight. I'm on page 200. And Jeremy just admitted that he's the one that read Lowen's book not Verity. <laughs> I have this itching feeling that the plot twist is going to involve Jeremy somehow actually being the bad guy because this whole book is building up how basically awful Verity is. But I, I have this feeling it's going to twist and it's actually going to be Jeremy that's bad. But I really like him. I like him. I don't even think I like him and Lo together. I just think I like him. We'll see. I've almost finished this entire thing. Did I finish this in a single day? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Sorry that I didn't really vlog the reading experience for the last like 100 pages. I was literally in bed. My boyfriend's asleep next to me, so I couldn't just like pull out the vlog and like record my thoughts. But I literally just like could not put it down because I just wanted to like know what was gonna happen. Like most Colleen Hoover books, there is a like big twist at the end so i was like itching and itching and itching to get to that twist and it literally happens like the last 10 pages of the book yeah i ended up like having to read the entire thing basically i definitely liked it more than i liked it ends with us there were moments in this book that actually like scared me like i was reading it in between playing video games like i played dead by daylight a lot and queue times can get kind of long for that so what i'll do is like me and my friend mana will play in between games we'll read bo our books that we're reading it's very cute love that so i was reading chapters like in between matches and there were moments where i audibly was like oh like scared and man i was like are you are you good when they were making out and she looked up and verity was at the top of the stairs nah, nah, no bitch mm. yeah no that's creepy as fuck and the sleepwalking scene where she sleepwalks into verity's bed bye first of all okay could you imagine being verity who's like faking these injuries which we'll we'll get to we'll get to we'll get to that because i have a bone to pick but like she's faking her condition and could you imagine being her and seeing like your your husband's like new fling walk and just get in bed with you i i think i would end the charade right there if i was verity like i don't the miss girl had the fucking willpower verity did nothing but gaslight gatekeep and girl boss this entire fucking book because how did you how did you even do that like it just doesn't make sense that's how like she's in she's a fucking otherworldly being like i don't know every character in this book though was like bad and i actually like that every character was morally gray there's not one character that i'm like yes they did everything right good for them verity's whole like faking her illness thing which makes no sense like there's so many like you doctors in-home nurses scans she's taking medication no fucking real sane human person could fake that for that long like no i don't believe it and also the reasons why she did it make little to no sense for me i was actually pretty excited because 
at the beginning when she started talking about the feeling of becoming a mother and taking a backseat to your children. I was really refreshing at first because I don't think books highlight enough about like postpartum depression and you know, like you're always taught that motherhood is this insanely wonderful and beautiful thing, but I'm sure there are people out there who are not ready nor want to be mothers. And I, and I thought that this was gonna bring up a really good, interesting discussion about motherhood. At first I was like, okay, look, I like Verity. I feel like I can understand some of her concerns. I know there are people out there who have kids and they don't connect with their children right away. It's a very strange experience and they feel like they're doing something wrong. And so I, when I first heard Verity's like initial chapters about having kids, I was like, okay, you know, what I can kind of see where she's coming from and then it just spiraled out of control and she's fucking trying to choke her baby to death so yeah no and then we have Loen it was a pretty like boring character to be honest like she just is kind of annoying her whole thing with her mom was like weird and I feel like it wasn't really explained enough she wasn't so annoying that I like hated reading from her perspective like it was fine until she got pregnant <laughs> like she really hooked up with Jeremy and then sat there and like made sure that like all of his, you know, was getting at her, you know. Colleen Hoover loves a pregnancy trope. I swear to God, if ugly love has a pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> when she like basically ensured that she was gonna get pregnant with Jeremy's kid, very weird. I loved Jeremy throughout the most of the book. Like I really liked him. The manuscript really did a good job at like making him a really likable character. I was standing him. I was like, okay, he's an icon, he's a legend. And I didn't even really find that him cheating on Verity with Lowen was like problem. I know some people like don't probably would disagree and like didn't like that part about the book, but I didn't mind it because like to me, if I was in like a vegetative state, I would want my partner to like move on and be happy. The, the biggest issue is that he kills her. Tw he tried to kill her once and then he kills her again. Like I would have done like good for him. My biggest problem with Jeremy though, is that he knew about the manuscript and let Lowen stay in the house and let Crew stay around Verity, even if he really thought that she was like in a vegetative state. And then when Lowen was bringing up concerns and getting scared, he literally brushed it off and tried to make her feel like she was like, th like seeing things, like th just paranoid but he knew the entire time. So that's fucking weird. So yeah, all of the characters have like flaws and like implications. And so that's why I think the ending of this book is very interesting. It is one of those books that ends with like, it's up to your interpretation, really. I feel like there's a pretty split, like team manuscript or team letter. I'm 100% team manuscript. First of all, I'm studying writing at college and I feel like if you're really a mother that truly loves her children, like how could you realistically write such graphic and horrifying things about your children's accidental deaths as if you committed them. Like there's something already off with Verity if she's able to actually write that and not put a preface to it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I'm gonna do this as an exercise, there's gonna be a page at the beginning that's like, BT dubs, if anyone finds this shit, it's not for real. Secondly, she wrote the letter the night that she saw Lo and Jeremy hooking up and having sex, which is a pretty fucking convenient time to wanna clear your name. Like if she would have written this letter before Lo even moved into the house, maybe I would be more inclined to believe it. She sees her husband hooking up with some other woman and she's like, let me make him feel bad. Let me change the story. Let me flip the script. It's just too convenient of timing for me. Like, why wouldn't you have said something before? Okay, I'm interrupting my review and thoughts about Verity. This is a few hours later. I was just looking up to see any, if any other people were doing discussions about whether they are team manuscript or team letter. And I found this interview at like nine minutes and 27. It's posted by Betty's book list. And she literally says that she's not even 100% sure herself which one is real, but that she really does feel deep down that Verity's evil. So to me, that just further proves that I'm team manuscript. And I think the letter was manipulation. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> That's Verity by Colleen Hoover. Okay, so as you can probably tell, I definitely enjoyed this 
a lot more than I did It Ends With Us. I'm gonna give this one a four out of five stars. I actually uh, enjoyed this and I would recommend it if you're interested in reading like a thriller romance. If Colleen Hoover writes more books like this, sign me up, I will read them. Next, we are moving on to Ugly Love. Good morning. I just ordered Chipotle delivery because I really wanted a burrito. Look what came in the mail. I'm actually shocked. I was literally asleep when this got delivered. I was thinking that I wasn't even gonna be able to get this today until like really late at night, but nope, I have it. I'm gonna start this today and then tomorrow's my birthday. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to like fly through this as quickly as I did with Verity just because I have a lot of stuff going on the next few days but I'm gonna try and finish it by the end of the week. Out of every Colleen Hoover book, I think this is the one that I know the least about going into it. All I know is that there's two people and they have like a, I think it's a brother's best friend and it's like friends with benefits. It's funny because now that I know how Colleen Hoover works, I see this cover and I'm like, did someone drown? Someone drown? Yes, yes! Yeah! Like I'm trying to think about what this represents because her, her covers always tell you something about the story. I'm pretty excited actually. I feel like out of all the ones I've read so far, this one's story and plot seems the most intriguing to me because I love a good smutty hookup book. Like give it to me. Too bad this guy's drunk because I think he's hot. Like, why would you say that to your brother? What? Okay, girl. So, Miles is a pilot and Tate is a nursing major. I feel like all the girls that I went to high school with that went into nursing were fucking assholes. Anyone else? Is that just me? Okay, I was not expecting, like, this, like, sort of poetic writing. Like, okay, Miles. Didn't know you were a poet, king. <laughs> I just thought you were a drunk. Maybe those are mutually exclusive. This whole thing makes no sense. That like, oh, Corbin and I are so close. I miss him so much. But you don't know where he lives. You weren't aware that he lived in a big apartment in San Francisco. You weren't aware that his best friend was a dude named Miles. You weren't aware of like anything about his life. So like, are you really that close? Oop, so Rachel is gonna be Miles' stepsister. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's unfortunate, Bestie, that's unfortunate. That's pretty weird. I know it's not like, you know, they're not actually related or whatever, but yeah, it's kind of weird. The step-sibling thing, very strange. Okay, the poetry thing was kind of cute at first, but now it's just getting a little bit ridiculous, very insta-lovey. You've had two conversations with this girl. The only thing you know about her is that she lived in Arizona and her mom is fucking your dad. And like, I look at the sink. I want to look at Rachel. I breathe in air. I want to breathe in Rachel. I close my eyes. I only see Rachel. Calm down. Calm down. This is giving very much me when I first discovered Justin Bieber and I was nine years old. So far, I do not give a single absolute care in the world about any of the chapters with Rachel. And it just feels very insta-lovey to me and just excessive like i honestly only really like miles in the present day chapters with tate the more closed off standoffish like they're slowly getting to know each other over the period of a few weeks it just is like more realistic to me and i like it a lot better because miles in high school with rachel like it's like he's never met a woman before not corbin thinking that miles has been gay <laughs> for like six years I guess that explains why Corbin was so chill about Miles just like hanging around his sister all the time because normally he's like pretty like possessive over that like he doesn't want his friends going after his sister but he thought Miles is gay so he wasn't ever worried. Okay so it's a little bit later in the day. I actually got ready. I'm parked right now at my college waiting to go to my class. I have like 30 minutes before... I have about 30 minutes until my class starts, so I'm going to read a little bit more. I got all the way to page 100, literally, is where I ended off chapter 12. I'm not sure of the order in which Colleen Hoover published her books. Like, I don't know if she wrote this one before Verity or It Ends With Us. Like, I don't know what came first, what came second, but to me, it feels like Colleen Hoover was trying to prove a fucking point with the way that she writes in this book. And it's a little bit too much. Like, the point is proven, bitch. 
I'm over it. Every other sentence is like supposed to be poetic I think and it really just takes me out of the story because it's not even that good and I'm not even talking about the chapters from like the six years in the past no I'm talking about like everything like even when they're making out he's invading I don't think he means to he's just invading my thoughts and my stomach and my lungs and my world that's his superpower invasion oh slay Remind me to never film video updates in the school parking lot. Even like the amount of times that Tate refers to herself as liquid. I'm not Tate when I'm near Miles. I'm liquid and liquid doesn't know how to be firm or stand up for itself. Liquid flows. That's all I want to do with Miles, flow. And it's like, okay, that'd be fine if that was the only, that, that's it. Boop, done, made your point, next. No, Tate has referred to herself as liquid, I think seven times now. And that's why I'm like, I feel like she wrote this one first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bet that she wrote this one before either of the other two. And then I'm gonna go check it while I'm editing this and I'll let you know. <laughs> because I just feel like she was really trying to prove a point. Like she needed to get this shit published. She said, I'm gonna make every other sentence a fucking metaphor bitch. Whatever. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. It's my birthday! Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 9th, which means I am officially 22 years old. I'm here to talk about ugly love a little bit more. I am now on page 221, so I am nearing the end. I think I have like a third of the way to go. And last night while I was in bed, I hit the dreaded chapter where we find out that Rachel got pregnant. <laughs> I think as I've been reading this, my enjoyment for this book is just slowly declining. And I definitely think I'm at a point where I really am not enjoying it. The tip of the iceberg for me especially was one, Rachel getting pregnant because like, I'm so over pregnancy tropes. I feel like now my theories changed that, you know, the baby died probably. I don't want to read it about another baby dying. And another pregnancy it's like the same shit different font but then after that literally like the chapter after we find out rachel's pregnant miles and tate have unprotected sex which is like okay but then after he does it he just leaves and slams the door on her and then doesn't talk to her for days i get it's a friends with benefits thing aftercare is still very important in a sexual relationship and miles just has no regard for that i don't think he's emotionally or mentally or physically ready to be in an actual friends with benefits relationship tate tate isn't either like she's catching feelings and it's just yeah i don't know i don't like any of the characters in this book really so now i feel like something had to have happened with the baby obviously because miles isn't out here like being a dad he's not like oh yeah i got this kid that i gotta go take care of or whatever so something happened to the kid i assume something with water which again like if we have another child drowning it's literally like verity 2.0 gotta plow through the end and see what happens but right now i'm just don't i don't care really that's how i'm feeling i'm very upset because i really thought i was gonna like this one but right now i'm just not vibing with it all that much oh i forgot to mention i get like protective older brother i think it can be done well it can be done in a nice way but corbin just feels kind of like sexist and weird like this weird claim over his little sister when she's literally like miles said she's a grown woman she can make her own decisions she even talked about how she was grossed out by dylan and then when he made a move on her corbin's like you better not go to his apartment. Obviously, she's not gonna go do that, you stupid idiot. It's giving me an ick. It's giving me a really big ick. Women don't need men, especially their family, their dad, their brother, to like kill for them just so they don't have sex. Like if Tate wants to go and fuck somebody, she can go and fuck somebody, she's a grown woman. Like, I don't know, it's just, yeah. Anyway, as I said, don't like any of the characters, except for maybe Ian. I also want to mention that Cap was a somewhat likable character, just like some funny old man, until he pulled out uh, the interrupting cow joke, the when life gives you lemons, make sure you know whose eyes to squeeze them in. I hate when writers use really well-known, obvious jokes. Come up with something yourself. Come up with something yourself or don't do it at all. It's not funny. It's so cringe. 
No way. There was just like a random plane crash that had nothing to do with any of the characters in the story. It was just like a random plot device that they just threw in. And two seconds after finding out that none of their friends or loved ones were involved in this crash and Tate's over here like crying, sobbing because she just got over like worrying that her brother died. Miles is trying to fucking kiss her and talking about how she's glad she doesn't have pants on. Like, oh my God, what? <laughs> Did we really need a whole scene about circumcision? You'll thank me later for it, especially when you're older and you get involved with girls. It is not better for having sex. The excess skin actually helps with friction and helps sex feel better for both people involved. So um, yeah, not a fan of this entire section. It's also just so weird to have an infant child. He's a day old and be talking about like, oh, you'll probably start having sex. Why are we, why are we even thinking about that right now? And now we're talking about how big this two day old child's balls are? What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny. But it is kind of funny. They were literally talking about how big their son's balls are, got distracted, and he drove their car into a fucking river or whatever, a lake. <laughs> you have to be fucking kidding me. People are really out there like sobbing, like this is one of the saddest books they've ever read. And now Rachel hates him because he didn't manage to save their son. Rachel, I'm pretty sure you couldn't save him either, babe. I finished the book. I'm gonna read the epilogue, even though I've kind of made like a rule to myself to not read epilogues because I usually hate them. Like nine times out of 10, I hate them. I don't like when a book feels like it has to tie everything up in this perfect bow all the time. I feel like it's gonna be like something about them having a kid. Yep, <laughs> there. Yep, they're having a kid. Like predictable. It's the beautiful moments like these that make up for the ugly love. I think my favorite chapter in the entire book was the chapter where Miles goes back and talks to Rachel and kind of gets that closure at the end because I feel like up until that point I really just didn't like Rachel's character. I didn't understand their connection. It was kind of annoying to me how she blamed him for everything but seeing her like come to terms and understand that that was wrong of her to do. It was really nice and beautiful. I get that it's a book and like books would not be nearly as interesting if people just like went to therapy <laughs> and like dealt with their emotions but that's definitely what I feel like just could have happened like you spent six years just being like an empty shell like I definitely don't think anything is better than Verity I think this is definitely Colleen Hoover at her best yeah I finished it in two days okay so that was ugly love it sucks because I really wanted to like this. I thought I would like this a lot more than I did. After reading Verity, I honestly, I got kind of hyped up. I was like, okay, I thought I was gonna love it. I thought I was gonna love it, but I didn't. I am rating Ugly Love two stars because one stars are like my DNFs or books that I would literally never touch again with the 10 foot pole. I would read this again. If someone like forced me to read that, I would do it. You know what I mean? It's not, it wasn't like literally the worst thing I've ever read. There was just a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't enjoy about this. I didn't enjoy Miles as a character. And when we started getting the flashbacks with him and Rachel, like it was bordering on obsessive. It was bordering on restraining order. I hear Rachel. I smell Rachel. I need Rachel. I want to put Rachel in my soup. I want to cut her up into pieces and eat her for dinner. Also, the way that Miles handled sex in this book did not sit right with me. A friends with benefits relationship can be done in a way that is healthy and honest between two people. And um, what he did with his words was honest. Like he was honest about telling Tate what he expected, but his actions were so gross. Like the way that he acted after sex was just nasty. The way that Tate handled their relationship was gross to me, like always pushing and pushing and pushing for more when he had firmly set that boundary. It was just toxic. It was, it was, it was toxic. And again, the writing in this, I think was the most cringe of the three. Since this is the earliest of the three books that she published, her writing I can totally see has gotten better over time. It's funny because the way that I ranked these books goes in order from like, lowest to greatest is also the earliest published to the most recent. Colleen Hoover, write some more thrillers, baby. 
I loved Verity. <laughs> I guess if you're gonna take anything away from this video, uh, I would read Verity. That's that's what I would recommend. Yeah, overall, I did have a good time. I do love that Colleen Hoover has a writing style that just makes you keep reading. Very rarely in any of these books were there chapters that I was like struggling to get through, where I needed to like skim and I just wanted to get done. Like she has a good way of keeping her plots interesting enough and intriguing enough that you are just kind of entertained the entire way through the book. I read all of them within the span of like one to three days. They're just super easy to get through and they give you that sense of accomplishment like I just read a book but yeah that's basically it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it try not to rip me a new asshole in the comments I know a lot of you guys love Colleen Hoover these might be some of your favorite books of all time and I can totally understand and respect that that is the beautiful thing about reading is that everyone's gonna have their own opinion and what you read and what you enjoy is yours alone I loved Normal People, Sally Rooney. People hate that book and that's fine. We can have different tastes, but yeah, those are my thoughts overall on the three books that I read from Colleen Hoover. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want me to do this with another author or, you know, another popular book series or something like that, let me know in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. I love making reading vlogs. They are so fun. I will see you guys all in my next video. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sending you love and light and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.